In this video, you'll see how to search and browse local holdings records, or LHRs, in WorldShare Acquisitions. The same functionality is also available in WorldShare Circulation and in Record Manager. WMS libraries will have local holdings records for all monographs and serials. LHRs are attached to a bibliographic record in WorldCat. For monographs, LHRs would include a branch and shelving location, a local call number, the item barcode, can also include item-specific lending and reproduction policies. For serials, LHRs will also include volume and or issues information. LHRs are created in a number of ways. They're created when you receive a single part monograph that's been ordered. They're also created when you import shelf-ready data files. They're also created using text view on the copy screen and acquisitions or circulation. And finally, they're created using Mark 21 view in Record Manager. There are several reasons why you might need to search LHRs. You may want to find a specific copy to delete holdings. You may want to find duplicate barcodes or find shared print records or find records with a certain lending policy. You can also perform bulk actions on LHRs, such as changing a branch location or a shelving location sending items to a label print list, or moving local holdings records to a different bibliographic record. You can also browse LHRs by call number for shelf listing, which can be helpful in assigning call numbers to new items. To get started searching for LHRs, choose the data type local holdings records and the scope my LHRs. Next, click on the drop down on indexes and choose an index which will differ depending on what you want to do. Some indexes, such as branch shelving location, will have a subselection drop down list, and you'll need to select the relevant option, such as name of the branch or shelving location. After performing the search, you can filter the results by branch or shelving location, by reproduction policy, by shared print, by temporary shelving location, or by OCLC number. Let's say I just want to do a quick barcode search to delete an LHR because I'm withdrawing the 1997 edition of this book called Canine Good Citizen, which has been replaced by a newer edition. So after logging in, I've selected Acquisitions, and then I'll click on Discover Items. And next, I'll click on the Data Type dropdown, and I'll select Local Holdings Records. The default scope for LHRs is My LHRs, which is a search scope. If I click the scope drop down, you can see there is also the My LHRs browse, which we'll look at in a few minutes. So I'll leave the scope set to My LHRs, and the default index at the top of the list is barcode. So I'm going to scan the barcode, and then I can either click search or if my barcode scanner enters the search, it will just appear. And next, I want to select the LHR that's here by clicking in the checkbox next to it. Next, I'll click the Action drop-down, and I'll select Delete Barcoded Items. The system responds, you're about to delete the selected barcode item. If there are no other items associated with the LHR, then the LHR will be deleted. So I'll click on Delete. And then I get a confirmation updated the local holdings record. Another reason to search LHRs might be to print labels for new books. So I could do a search of LHRs by the new book's location. So I'll click on the index drop down and I'm going to select the branch shelving location index. And next I'll click on the branch drop down and I'll select the main branch. I'll click on the shelving location drop down and I'm going to select the main new book shelving location, and then I'll click on search. My search retrieves 26 items. To see them all on the same page, so I can easily select all of the items at the same time, I'll change the number of rows per page by clicking the rows drop down, and then I'll select 50. And now I have all of the items on the same page, so I can click the top checkbox to select all 26 items. Next, I'll click the action dropdown and I'll select send to label print list. And then I'll click on send. And the system confirms 26 records sent to the label print list. There's also a link to the print list where I can print the labels. 
Next, let's say I want to change the shelving location for this group of LHRs that I have from the new books location to the stacks. Since I already have my list of items for my new books location for my previous search, I'll just click on the action drop down and I'll select change shelving location. And on the dialog box that appears, I'll click the shelving location drop down and I'm going to select main stacks and then I'll click change. And the system confirms updated the shelving location for the LHRs. Now let's say I want to move a local holdings record to a different bibliographic record. Maybe I found a more complete record that more accurately describes the item I have. So I'll search my LHRs using the barcode index again. I'll scan my barcode in. And then I'll click the checkbox next to the item to select it. And then I'll click the action drop down. And I'm going to select move to a different bibliographic record. In the dialog box that appears, I can either enter the OCLC number of the new record if I know it, or I can click find and select record. I'm going to click find and select record. And then I'll do a search of all WorldCat using the keyword index. And I'll enter the title, Canine Good Citizen. And I also have the author's last name. So I'll also enter that, Birch, and then I'll click on search. The first record in the results list is the one that I currently have my LHR on. If I hover over the blue eye for the second record, I can see some of the bibliographic information for this record. Since I've decided this more closely matches the item I have, I'll select this record. So I'll click on select record. The OCLC number for the new record is populated in the dialog box. And I'll click in the checkbox next to associated WorldCat holdings that says automatically delete when the last LHR is moved from the bibliographic record. This means my institution holding symbol will also be deleted from the old record when I move the last or only LHR to the new record. And then I'll click on move. Then I'll click confirm to acknowledge that I'm moving the LHR and deleting any LBD or local bib data and the WorldCat holding from the old record. And the system confirms moved one LHR to the new bibliographic record. You may also want to search your LHRs for a specific staff or public note so that you can do any follow-up actions that are necessary. For example, I've added a staff or a private note to several LHRs to add a book plate for a donated item. So I'll click the drop down for my LHRs indexes and I'll choose private note. And then I'll enter add book plate in the text box and click search. And I've retrieved nine records. So let's say I just want those in my East Branch stacks location. So I'll click the filter by drop down and I'll select branch shelving location. And then I'll click the branch drop down, which is currently set to any, and I'll select the East Branch. And next I'll click the shelving location drop down, currently set to any, and I'm going to select the East Stacks shelving location. Then I'll click apply filters. And this results in just two records, which I can retrieve to add the book plates. You can also search your LHRs by call number. I'm going to click in the index drop down again, and I'll select the call number index. And then I'll enter call number in the text box and I'll click on search. And this results in two records for the two copies I have of the title Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, one at my main branch and one at my east branch. You can also browse by call number and instead of retrieving a list of records, you'll first be put into a browse index with the call number most closely matching what you've entered designated with a marker. You would be able to go forward and backward in the browse index and see records that come before and after the call number that you've entered. This can be useful when assigning call numbers or resolving problems with duplicate call numbers for different items. Since it's a browse, you'll need to enter characters from left to right, but you don't need to enter the entire call number. The item classification and item part or cutter in the 852 subfield H and I and several other subfields are indexed. So to do a browse, you'll first need to change the scope from my LHRs to 
my LHRs browse. So I'll click on this scope drop down and I'm going to select my LHRs browse. And then the index changes to call number browse, which is the only index available for browsing LHRs. So I'll do the call number browse with the same call number I used for the LHRs call number search, which is still in the text box. And I'll click on search. The search results will be displayed in the table with three columns. So I have the call number column, and you can see the closest result match is identified by the location icon. I would be able to click on the call number to view the local holdings record. And then the middle column has bibliographic information. If the call number returns a single item, you'd see the entire 852 field from the LHR displayed. I can scroll down to see more call numbers in the index. And if I click on a call number, the system will do a search and retrieves the two LHRs that have this call number. If you need additional help, please visit help.oclc.org for documentation, training, and contact information for OCLC support in your region.